Now, I'm going to update you on what's going on with this pattern. It's going to involve our tropics. It's going to involve the West Coast all the way to the East Coast on what's going on, not only with storm systems, what's going on with our temperatures, because June is about to bring a big flip to everybody. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe them all year long. I'm a weather forecasting, and I do bring updates on everything I talk about. Now, you can see for this morning, we're getting some precipitation build up for Central America. We have another tropical wave moving through right there. We have another one over here. But look at this, the huge one over here that was a big wave moving through that everyone's thinking that this was going to be our next big issue. There's a lot of dust suppressing this wave capping towards the thunderstorms can't form now what's going to happen in the tropics at least for june i do see after this we're going to go on our break and then we're going to come right back in july right back to our hurricane season so all of these waves here all these waves are going to propagate over towards the western caribbean we're going to get a surface low pressure potentially forming up still going out into the atlantic now the rest of these waves is not forming a big storm the rest of these waves are going to continue to propagate over the southern side. That's where it's getting suppressed by all this dust and potentially form up by the southern half of the Bay of Campeche. Maybe even spin all the way around at some strong energy, bringing in some storms towards the west coast of the U.S. Because just like I've been updating y'all all week long now, what's going on with this pattern? We're still going on that high ridge, still going on that deep trough. Still getting that storm system building up. We're still getting that high ridge of heat building up. And you do got cooler temperatures over here while you still have that. But well, we're going to switch. This high pressure that's revolving over here around Mexico, this is going to move towards the southeast of the lower 48. So this is going to put you all in a big high ridge of heat. You're going to lose that cool air that you had. And the cool air is going to move in for the west side of the United States while you get surface low pressures building up right off the coast you don't have a lot of dew points a lot of instability so you're not gonna get a lot of storms but this right here is going to change our weather pattern as we go into june so i'm going to show you all that information in this video remember all timestamps are in the description below let's get into your information now update from yesterday's storms we did have two tornado reports we had one in kentucky and we had another in new mexico all the wind damage did report all the way from DFW towards Houston into Louisiana. A lot of wind damage reports still came out, over 50. And they're just still dealing with a lot of power outages. Latest this morning shows Arkansas and Kentucky as well. Still showing almost 500,000 homes without power in Texas. But it is getting better. As we refresh it, it has gotten a little bit better. It got 20,000 more homes. They are trying. They are working on it. Even though you got all this intense heat moving in. It's going to take multiple days for everybody to get their power. Now you can see the latest update. We look at our 500 millibar vorticity that we're still getting that trough in the northeast. We're still getting that little shortwave trough in the northwest, bringing cooler temperatures on both. But we're still getting these storms build up all the way from the south central all the way towards the north central as we go through the coming days. And you can see after the sun goes down for tonight, you are going to start getting those 40s and 50s moving through for the Great Lakes, Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, also through the northeast and even colder over towards the northwest. You're going to get 40s and 30s all around your area. Now this is going to change. It will warm right back up for tomorrow again, but then it's going to cool down again as you get this transition and eventually go all the way across the northern side of the lower 48 before we go into this next transition with the heat. So we do have our severe weather risk for today. You do have that 2% chance for tornadoes. I told you it was potentially going to build up in the coming days and it will be smaller. Here's your cities at risk so far. So far they have for Texas. We do see it goes into western Kansas, southeastern Colorado, and northeastern New Mexico. Also chances for winds for today. Strongest being in this 15% and chances for hail. Now you can see for today you do get some storms that build up all the way from Kansas all the way towards the upper Midwest. And this is bringing that line of storms that's expected by National Weather Service. But overnight, you're going to get something a little bit more severe. This is where you get a potential serial duratio, where it strengthens up as a duratio bringing strong winds, weakens down, and then strengthens back up again all the way until tomorrow afternoon. That is a potential. you got to watch out for that. A potential duratio or serial duratio could be forming. Showing that you're going to get pockets of 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts for the north, central, upper Midwest. Also over here for south, central, for southern Texas. But you can also see as we go through for overnight into the early morning hours, 
potentially bring in some wins with that potential serial derecho, a recycling storm that brings strong winds, weakens down, and then brings strong winds again. We got to keep watching this transition and see if that continues to trend. Now, that's going to continue not only for tomorrow, also for Friday as we get those storms building up on the southern side. Then we're going to get that potential change where we get a lot of heat getting pulled up. We get a couple of minor storms that pass by, but as we go into next week, then we're going to get that storm system building in, bring in our chance for a strong storm. Also, our high ridge and our next storm potentially swinging around from the tropics from Central America and maybe involving. You see how you got the high pressure going around, swinging all that around, maybe into the West Coast. And you can see we might get a front induced surface low, a strong low going out into the Atlantic during this transition. So for tomorrow, you see you got that slight risk that has grown and that marginal, and you do have chances for tornadoes as you get that short wave trough, southern and eastern side of it. So far, you got a 2%. Here's your cities and states at risk. You also have the wind threat. I think this will stretch out even further towards Louisiana. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for damage and winds for Thursday and your hail threat in the same region. And then as we go into Friday, you can see the 5% and the 15% that they do have for severe weather. Here's your cities and states at risk so far. And then as we go into next week, you got the revolving high pressure. You got the storm system coming in the West Coast. We got our surface low building up strong right here, surface low pressure. And you also have that wave, the tropical moisture that's building up in the Western Caribbean, still going out over Jamaica, over Cuba, over the Bahamas, into the Atlantic all at one time so you can see when you look way up in the atmosphere it's 500 millibar you do get that front induced storm system in the atlantic but you also get that high ridge and you get that strong low pressure building up well you get a strong high pressure this is obviously your, your high epo going to that positive pna and you get that strong low pressure building up while you get another system building up right off the west coast going right around this high pressure is upper level high. And you can see going into next week, Monday into Tuesday, that it really sparks up a lot of convection, a lot of lift to bring these thunderstorms. And it's not just for then. As you go all the way into Wednesday, you got your severe weather risk as well. And as it keeps coming down, maybe even for Thursday as that pushes through, you do have the lift. You do have the moisture. You can see where your dew points. The same shot right here on Tuesday. Look how it smashes in when you dry line. Then as you go into Wednesday, it's a little bit further to the southern side. And as you go into Thursday. So this is going to bring more severe weather, maybe even further to the south. Remember, the higher the peak, the deeper the trough. And we're still talking about a very high ridge that's going to happen on the west coast. This is going to bring you all that heat. But then it's going to go away. And you're going to start getting cooler temperatures and the heat is going to go towards the eastern side of the lower 48. Not showing a lot of cold air, but you can see the cold air starting to come in. Right, what you have now for the northwest and the northeast, then it's going to linger around while we go through that transition. Now, so while we're getting that transition, we get that storm system and you see with GFS, it's not taking it too much further to the south because the, the high ridge does relax down after it goes to a peak. So we still got to get closer to see. Still, you can see the ridge is still where you get in the heat. But now you're getting this surface low pressure building over the west coast of the U.S. You got your upper level high right here that is going to revolve around, bringing everything further to the east. At the same time, now it's going to bring storm systems into the west coast while this high pressure is upper level high swings around and moves further towards the east. This will bring heat towards the eastern side of the lower 48 and a lot of storms towards the western side of the lower 48. Matter of fact, this is exactly where we have all that lift that we've been watching for a month now. It's not coming through the tropics. It's going to be for the lower 48 for the United States. And we're going to keep getting storm after storm right across the west coast. So here's that transition as we go into June. You got that surface low building, that front induced low building up into the northern Atlantic. We also got that wave in the Caribbean forming up into something weak, 
going out into the land while you get a couple of spin-up storms while you go through this transition. Then we get that storm system that bulks on through. Remember, GFS takes a little bit further to the north than the Euro. We got to get closer. It's still past 48 hours, just trying to be accurate. Then you get all this low pressure that builds up on the west coast a lot of favorable environment just building up bringing storm after storm continuously over the west coast this is where a lot of that favorable environment will be why you got the high pressure going around this way so now it's going to bring storms towards the west coast then it's going to bring a cool down you can see this transition here so here we go with our Cooler temperatures in the northwest and the northeast as we go into the beginning of June. We can still get all that heat that builds for June. A lot of heat in the seas as well, but we still got all that heat building. We're going into summer. Then as we go towards the 6th and beyond of June, then we're going to start going into that pattern where it's going to start bringing not only this heat that you can see is bringing 80s and 90s all the way towards the upper Midwest. This is going to transition. Then you're going to get cooler temperatures on the west side of the U.S. while it pulls all that heat towards the eastern side of the U.S. as you get that big high pressure, that upper level high, swinging around this way. And this is transitioning all the heat towards the eastern side of the lower 48 while you get some cooler temperatures towards the western side of the lower 48. So here's your update on the tropics. Not only that little wave that's obviously showing further and further to the east, forming up in the Caribbean some week, maybe something going out into the Atlantic. Still got all that favorable environment. A lot of lift in the atmosphere. Look at this. It's moving a little bit further to the west than what we last seen, staying strong. This is what's building towards the west side of the United States, also for Mexico. This is a favorable environment. After that, for the rest of June, then we're going to be in an unfavorable environment for the rest of June. Potentially a big plume of dust. We will see. Then, look, you can get a little peak as we go into the first week of July. Here comes our favorable environment right back again. So after this comes towards all these storms bringing towards the west side of the United States coming across the central U.S. as we get all this heat switching around, after that, it's going to be quiet in the tropics. For the rest of june now right now national hurricane center don't have anything for the next seven days but we're going to start to see something building and they're going to put a little area out right here for something that could form up and go in this direction that's going to be the first piece of information you're going to see the second piece of information is you're going to see something potentially forming up over in this region Matter of fact, look what came out a day early. We got our update on our global tropics. So as we go from the beginning of June to June 11th, more confidence that that will form up somewhere along the eastern Pacific, the tropical wave that goes across the Caribbean out into the Atlantic, bringing above average precipitation. Now for Florida, all this orange you see is above average temperatures, and you can see the above average temperatures that's kicking in for the west coast still. Then as we go towards the middle of June, towards June 12th, through June 18th, you can see that wave will push further to the west, chances for tropical development in this region. Now, I'm thinking this will still pull around towards the western side because we're going to have a high pressure revolving around on this side, swinging everything around. I will keep you updated. You can see this when you look at the latest outcome with the euro for a chance for a tropical depression as we go towards four and five days. More likely favorable for the eastern Pacific. But as you keep going, we have multiple waves. That next wave is going to be something weak that's going to be turning around Jamaica sometime around the 4th or the 5th. Going out into Atlantic, just losing all intensity on that wave. Then after that, the next wave is going to propagate towards the west. Everything's going to start building up towards the Bay of Campeche. Plus, you can see the update on this when you look at your tropopause way up in the atmosphere that as we get that storm system coming in around the 5th or 6th, that strong low pressure, that we get warmer temperatures going to be squeezing through over to south, south central, while we get that low pressure building up from everything swinging around from the tropics, and that goes that direction, and this is where it's going to start bringing the cooler temperatures and your storms, but this is bringing the heat, and you can see this when you look a little bit further with the GFS, as you get the warm temperatures in six days coming around, going towards the south, 
pushing that storm system a little bit further northern, not letting it come in too deep, then all that heat is going to be sitting on the eastern side of the lower 48 and potentially building while we get storm systems and some cooler temperatures on the northwest, just keeping all that heat building for the eastern side of the lower 48. And you can see this transition. So as we go around June 8th, we're gonna start getting all these very warm temperatures and we got a very warm heat indices that's gonna be coming with this also. We gotta look for the dew points. That's where your placement will be. Then as we go towards the 11th, once we go past the 10th, it's gonna to transition towards the center of the lower 48, towards the eastern side and bring cooler temperatures. This is your highs for around June 10th, June 11th, while you get these 90s pulling up. And you can see with your heat indices, a lot of dew points is gonna make a lot of feels like 90 to 100 for a lot of people during this transition. And the one thing is your lows. Now the one thing is gonna be, as you go early in the morning, you got this nice cool temperature swinging right back for the western side of the lower 48, get you out of that heat. But for the eastern side, this is going to be your best temperatures overnight. No more 60s, no more 50s. Your best temperatures are going to be in the 70s overnight. And then as we go into the next day, the 12th, here it comes right back again. You're going to be in those 90s, bringing all them strong dew points while it's cooler for the western side of the lower 48. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. I hope this helps you understand what is coming around the corner for you. If you find any value in this video, please share this on social media to other people. Let them find this information also. We have a big surge of heat coming, then we got a big transition coming. And it does involve our tropics the whole time. So please share this information. I appreciate everyone that does help. Now, before I go today, a few wise words for everyone that is suffering out there. There is a lot of suffering going on. Psalm 30 two through five. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Hope everybody has a great day. I hope you get your power on very quickly if you're able to see this and you don't have power right now. I do pray you do get it quickly, especially those that are enduring the heat. Because by now it's already day two. Tomorrow's going to make day three. So whatever's in your fridge is probably going to be getting old or getting bad. So I do pray for all of you to get fixed very quickly. Remember, all glory does go to God, our Father, Yahweh in heaven. I do hope he always keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody.